we're back. So Lorraine, I'll tell you, um, my neighbor is retiring after 32 years, I think, in Vanguard. And so I wanted to get her a bottle of champagne. So I luckily got through to one of the liquor stores today and was able to get a bottle of champagne. And I'm going to go pick it up after this call. And it's funny, they said, what else can I get you? And I was like, oh, yeah, I could use some tequila. It's about to be Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> so I'm picking up, it's a back to margaritas. I'm picking up a bottle of tequila tonight too. So yeah. Oh, I think you're on, you're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, there, there you go. go. Perfect. Yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah. So I was like, oh, while I'm at That's it, let's get, I know I love, I love margaritas. I love them. They're my favorite drink. Yeah. My, um, when my kids came to visit, oh, I know what it was. My sister for Christmas, they, um, they went to uh, Mexico and they went to one of the regions where um, I guess tequila is popular, but they brought home this and put in my, my stocking this little bottle of worm salt and I know made with worms and I was and you're supposed to like put it around the rim of the glass and put the tequila in so my kids had me purchase some tequila put it in the freezer and then we you know had the worm salt so perfect perfect <laughs> it actually was delicious that's great <laughs> hey Ryan thanks for joining I'm just going to step away for one second. I'll be right back. Ryan, we're talking about tequila. You're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, no. sorry. I think we met at uh, Mark Spool's senior leadership and OD group. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Which company are you with? Parkway Corporation. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Mike. how are you? I, I, we need to schedule a call. Yeah. Yeah. I figured you were busy. <laughs> Do you connect with uh, Samantha? I did. I did. She was great. Good, 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 good. Glad to meet you. Hey, Deb. Hello. Deb Kaufman. Hey, yeah, it, when I leave, it's just to get liquor. Don't think I'm doing something else. I haven't <laughs> my liquor yet. Uh, How are you, Deb? I've had, to, I've had to kiss up to my brother-in-law to get his liquor stash. It's been a tough day. <laughs> I, did it. I did it. I got it. I got the bottles dropped off here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and, and even Simba's happy. She's, she's good. Aww. Aww. We tend to be wine and beer around this house, so we're not in uh, any terrible shape. Yeah, no, I was out of wine. I'm not so much beer, but I was just out of it. But I knew he had a stash. <laughs> well, the 10-year um, anniversary gift for Iron Hill is a kegerator mm. and a free keg of beer. So, so I'm never out of beer. <laughs> oh, what a great gift. That is exactly. That's a fun gift. That is a great gift. Hey, Deb, how you doing? I'm good, Keith. And by the way, Keith, uh -oh. what are you doing telling people that we met on a dating app? <laughs> I, I, I do introductions to, for, to Keith to legitimate people, and I come back and they say, oh, I didn't know you met him on a dating app. Him, Wait a minute. Him, a married man. You like can't leave you with that coat. story and not tell us the rest of it, Deb. I did come say on. it was 20-some years ago. <laughs> Uh, that's all I'm saying. I, I connected him with somebody. I thought we could be helpful. I just told the person we've known each other forever. And she comes back and says, he told me you met on Tumblr or something. I Tinder. Tinder. Tumblr. Tinder. Tinder. Tumblr. 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 This is my problem. I'm not on dating app. <laughs> well, I'm not either for the record. <laughs> I know. But, but it, was, it was a clever joke. She la it was a good joke. It was a good joke, Keith. Thank you. people are coming in so I'm going to share my screen to get us started hey 
I forget my view to look right. There we go. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Happy, happy hour. <laughs> we made it so far. I get my screen to get everybody on it, then I won't be able to see the screen. I know, I was just, that's what I was trying to do too. Looks like we only have about 20 people on. And so we're gonna, I think it's, it's okay, we'll wait just a few minutes. We seem to get started a little bit after four every week and that seems to work, so. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Shelly, it's so nice to see your face. Likewise. It's like the rain's holding off for one more day anyway. The rain, uh, that, the rain is what starts to push me over the edge a little bit. Yeah. I just got an alert that said like massive flooding tomorrow. No, really? Yeah. yeah. Blinding downpours and flooding. Thursday into Friday. Hi. Fun. Hopefully, was it last? What is Friday, May 1st? Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully May has less rain. Was, was it two Fridays ago we were getting those tornado warnings? I think it was mm -hmm. a Friday. And then at like 4.30, the skies open up. I'm like, what is happening in this world? Mm -hmm. We're stuck at home, tornado warnings, and it's sunny and 70. It's, I don't know, it's a weird couple of weeks for sure. Let's hope May is better. All right. All right, we still have some people calling in. We'll just wait another minute. Shelly, I keep waiting for you to come over and have a cocktail in my driveway. No, I, I, I'm going to do that. I am. Maybe, ne maybe next week we can have me right here and then you outside of the window. Like, out, like an <laughs> Ellen? Like the <laughs> Ellen show is now? Have you seen that? <laughs> it's so funny. Although I will tell you, I've been watching Jimmy Fallon clips on Facebook with him and his girls at home. There's it is some of the funniest oh, TV I have seen, actually. So funny. Oh, yeah. His girls are really funny. They could like care less about their dad. Like I saw a clip last week where they must be able to either hit applause or boo, right? As if they were the audience. And he said, <laughs> girls, girls hit the applause. And they were trying to find the boo. And he goes, ha ha, dad win, I took it off, right? And they're in the background. All of a sudden the girl who's five downloads it again. And so she keeps hitting boo, 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 like during his monologue. It was the funniest thing. And he was like, how do you do that at five years old? It was so cute. Oh gosh. All right. Shall we get started? Hey guys, good afternoon. Hey, Marty, hey, how are you doing? Doing great. Hope you're all well also. You too. How's it going? All right, let's get started, everyone. Hello and welcome. Welcome to is it week three or four? I don't even know. Four? I think it's 345. I think it's three. Think it's exactly three. what I meant, Michael. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> so just as a reminder, well, if you're a first time caller, thank you so much for coming to our uh, HR at home happy hour. Uh, to recap what we really want to do in, a, in our little HR community is just a couple of things. Number one, stay connected. We in our normal lives would have been meeting at different events in the city or in, or in really King of Prussia and having some events and having some cocktails and catching up. So we wanted an opportunity to continue to do that. In standard fashion, we're going to have Keith Black give us a couple legal updates. So basically, you know, what's changed from last week in the world of legal around COVID-19. Um, and then we have yet again another great guest speaker today, Lorraine Serba from Iron Hill Brewery. And then we'll have an open Q&A at the end when she's done telling her story and, we're, and um, we have a chance to ask her questions. So with that, I will turn it over to Keith. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. And... Uh, Hello, everybody. Glad you could join us today. As we've, uh, as we've talked about, for those of you who've been on the first two that we've done, um, this is really not a legal update webinar. That's not the purpose of it. But what we do want to do is make sure that each week we at least hit a couple high points of changes or things that have happened during the past week um, that might be um, something of value for us. So um, tonight or today, I can't even tell what, whether it's today or tonight anymore, <laughs> let alone what day of the week it is. Um, but the, the top three kind of take a little bit of a local flavor, um, other than the first one. 
Uh, but I wanted to highlight too that, as you guys know, the Department of Labor, when when the FFCRA first came out, came out with a ton of guidance really fast, a flurry of Q and A's, um, and that slowed down a little bit. But on the 23rd, they did come out and and very clearly state that we are permitted as employers to test employees before they enter the workplace because this, uh, while typically would be an ADA issue, um, is appropriate an appropriate circumstance for us to test employees. Doesn't mean you should necessarily, but you have the ability to do it. If you do it, make sure that the tests are valid, accurate, uh, and that you do it consistently like everything else. Um, the city of Philadelphia, for those of you in the city, clarified for the, the city's WARN Act, as, as you're all familiar with um, the, the WARN Act and its implications for mass layoffs and plant closings, um, states and cities also have their versions of them. For Philadelphia's WARN Act, they clarified uh, through temporary regulations that COVID-19 does constitute a natural disaster and a national emergency under those exceptions, which means that the law requiring 60 days notice does not apply to any closures or layoffs that are caused by COVID-19. Uh, and that includes uh, closings ordered by the government as well. That's the national emergency piece. So if a business closes or has to lay off due to COVID-19, uh, that 60 day requirement doesn't apply, but it, you are still required to give as much notice as you possibly can of that happening. Again, just wanna keep in mind as we talked a little bit last week that we need to be aware that during the second wave, um, after we bring people back after the, the um, payroll protection program, eight weeks ends, if there are layoffs at that point, we need to be aware of potential warrant implications because it's not going to be an unforeseen event if we lay people off like it was the first time around. And then the third thing for this week's top three is just uh, Pennsylvania and New Jersey putting out some guidance as to the framework that they're announcing for reopening. Uh, no timelines on there, no dates on there, but there's a lot of detailed information if you're interested in going to either state's website. And Pennsylvania has put out a three-phase matrix, a, a red, yellow, and green, uh, and that's gonna be data-driven. It will be different based on region, so different parts of the state, maybe in different colors, uh, depending on, on the data and the testing and the, and the resources available. Um, and the state of New Jersey has put out six key principles, is what they're calling them, or metrics that they're gonna be using to guide the state for its reopening. So again, nothing real, um, formal in terms of official dates or even estimates of dates, but they are starting with these frameworks that they're putting in place and putting out there what conditions need to be met before they start reopening. And in Pennsylvania's case, they have, um, you know, they have a list of what's going to be opening first and then what will be next and what will be after that. So there are a lot of things to look at. It's, it's uh, very well written. It's comprehensive. There's a lot of pretty colors and charts and graphics for people like me who are afraid of words. Um, so it's easy to read, um, but if, if you want to look into either of those things, Pennsylvania and New Jersey both feature them pretty prominently on their state websites. So that's what we got for big things this week between uh, since the last time we met. Keith, regarding that third bullet, when you talk about, for example, Pennsylvania and the three phase matrix, red, yellow, green, that's not, is that just guidance or is that really what, that, that's guidance that employers should be considering in terms of how they return to work and what some of the uh, what the precautions are they should be taking? No, that's a good question. That's um, that's going to be the state's directives. So oh, uh, God. oh, even better. Okay. So during the red phase, I think we're in that now. Um, yeah. And we have the restrictions and the closures and the stay at home and the essential and all of that. That will be lessened a little bit when we get to the yellow phase. And again, that could be different in the Philadelphia metro than it might be in you know Monroe County or Butler County. Um, but that's going to release a little bit, relax a little bit, some of the restrictions that the state puts on. And then when it gets to green, it's even more relaxed. So that's what that means. Thanks. So that's almost like a, a, a starting point for us as we think about when we want to return our employee to get back to work. That should be a starting point for all of us to, to reference. Exactly. Yeah, great. Other questions for Keith? I think everyone could take themselves off mute if they have a question. Dylan, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. All right, I will turn it over to Vicki to introduce our guest speaker for the week. So I'm, I'm 
thrilled to have Lorraine Serva, who is the head of HR for Iron Hill Brewery with us. Um, Lorraine and I have worked together on some PSPS committees over the years, um, served on my leadership forum committee. So we've worked together a lot in the past. And so as we were talking about some potential um, types of companies that we thought would be interesting to highlight, um, we're trying to look at different industries and, and, and different sizes. And, and of course, the restaurant industry has been uniquely affected by the current situation. And we thought it would be really interesting to talk to, to Lorraine about how Iron Hill responded, what they're changing currently, how they've pivoted, how they've adjusted their business model. And um, even more interest interestingly, the road back. So what they're doing now to plan for opening restaurants and, and also interestingly, they're in, in multiple states. So how do you deal with the issue where, you know, you have different things happening in different states and different regulations in different states and, and, and dealing with the, all the employees and, and the back to work. So uh, I will tee up Lorraine to share a little bit of her story and, and I think she has some interesting things to share. Hopefully. <laughs> all right, hi everyone. Nice to see you. Yeah, so um, I wanted to start out just by giving you a couple statistics from the National Restaurant Association. And um, that is that 96% of restaurants have laid off employees. Eight, uh, they've laid off about 85% of their staff. And according to the National Restaurant Association, 81% of the restaurant workforce is currently unemployed. So yeah, hard, hard hit by Corona. And um, you know, we're, we're no different than the rest. So um, in the early days, I would say in February, you know, when we started hearing about coronavirus, um, I was sending out the wash your hands kind of messages. And we were encouraging folks to take our, um, we have a class called Yuck, Wash Your Hands, um, being in the restaurant industry. And so we were encouraging people to take the Yuck, Wash Your Hands class. And, um, you know, then we, we verified um, that our sanitizers that we were using in the restaurants were on the list, you know, of effective sanitizers, all that kind of stuff increased. We, are, we already do a lot of, of sanitizing, of course, being in the food industry, but we even increased that um, in the early days. And we started having daily meetings with our leadership team. Um, we had daily meetings with our board of directors, and I had daily meetings with my HR team. So, and that's, of course, separate from all of the individual ones. Those are just the, the group meetings. So lots and lots of meetings because things were changing so incredibly fast. And Vicki, you mentioned that um, we have different, we're in different states. So we're in four different states. We have um, 16 restaurants, uh, 1,700 employees. And um, as it turns out in those early days, like it was changing first, I think the first one might've been a county in Pennsylvania that changed the regulation and then and shut down, you know, and then cities. I mean, we, we had different cities, different counties, everyone doing something different in those early days that we were just trying to stay on top of what was going on in each of the locations so that we could um, comply. Um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. And uh, I felt, I, when, just for example, one day I remember um, that I, I woke up at, I, I was on my computer at 5.30 in the morning and uh, in right before I went to bed at 11.30 at night, I made my last email. So it was just long, long days, no days off, you know, working every single day of the week. It was crazy just trying to keep up with everything, all the changes and all the decisions that needed to be, to be made at the, at the time. And um, unfortunately, we did have a significant amount of, um, of furloughs, and the majority of our staff was furloughed. Um, and any, anyone who remained had a reduction. So the leadership team, uh, well, the managers were reduced to 70% of their salaries, the leadership team to 50%, and the three owners and the CEO uh, are taking zero salary uh, during this time. So, you know, all, all, all these changes. And when we put people on furlough, um, we did decide to pay uh, our portion and their portion of the healthcare premiums um, during this time so that at least they could be sure that they had, had healthcare. You know, we were confident that they would, that they would apply for unemployment, but um, the insurance, I think, is the, the big piece that we were worried about. 
Um, yeah, you know, and I, I think some of these orders, like they came, it's like, um, tonight at six o'clock, you will now be closed. You know, like th there were some that were less than 24 hours notice that you were gonna be closed. And uh, some give us a couple days uh, in the different locations, but it, it really was crazy there for a while. Um, you know, so then what do we do while, we, while they're on furlough? Well, like I said, we are paying the insurance. We also let them know that if anyone needed a meal, that we would provide meals. So just like we always do a staff meal, we do a staff meal in for the day shift and a staff meal for the evening shift. We now package them in to-go containers and employees can stop by and pick up um, the food to go for, um, for themselves. And um, we also have what we call comp, which is uh, a, we're each given a, a card and um, on it is loaded uh, money, money, it's not, not really money, but it's where we can spend in the restaurants. And so we continued to load that so that um, employees can come and order food and um, some of the other stuff that we're now offering. So we very quickly pivoted because we no longer could do dine-in service. And so we had been talking to a uh, vendor like, you know, DoorDash or whatever about um, food delivery, but they're extraordinarily expensive. They take a huge chunk of your profits. So we were trying to negotiate better rates and all that. Well, we quickly turned around and made those decisions and offered delivery within a week or so of, um, of the shutdowns. Um, we also, so we, we now offer uh, to go, which you can pick up, um, delivery through, you know, vendors and also uh, curbside delivery. Um, that only takes a, a skeleton staff. So normally we have about 100 employees in a restaurant. Now they might have about six employees working in each restaurant location um, just to, to keep that going. I mean, you know, the, the revenue fell off a cliff, right? Uh, and we've, we've done a lot of creative things to try to help. Um, we created meal kits. So um, you can purchase a meal kit and bring it home and cook it yourself. Uh, one of the fun ones, for example, is a pizza kit for four. So there's four balls of dough and, you know, you and your kids can roll out the dough and make your own individual pizzas, uh, something like that. We, um, and there's, there's other, other meal kits. And then we also did a marketplace because as we know, the toilet paper shortages and all that stuff. So you can actually purchase toilet paper, paper towels at Iron Hill uh, through our craft marketplace. But you can also purchase other items, like you can purchase milk, you can purchase apples, um, lettuce, steaks that are like Cairo, how do you say that? I would say it wrong, Cairovac, Cryovac, however you say it, uh, in those uh, plastic um, you know, containers that you can cook yourself. Um, so there's, there's lots of items that you can, um, can purchase. Of course, we have the to-go food that's already cooked, but we added these other elements um, to our repertoire in order to try to add some business. We've done some other creative things like, um, well, our, for example, our uh, head of brewery operations, who's, who's one of our original owners, uh, he did a virtual beer tasting. So they laid out which beers and the customer could stop by the restaurant closest to them and purchase those beers and then go home. And then on the, uh, you know, a couple days later, they had an online Zoom meeting where they explained and tasted the beers together and the customers could talk directly to our owner um, you know on that on that chat so that was a lot of a lot of fun and, and they had so much fun i think we're going to do some more events like that um, you know we're doing i mean a lot of things of course we're we're assisting in the community um, we have a partnership with one of our vendors kelly total benefits if any of you know kelly benefits and um, we're providing 800, in, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be providing 800 meals to virtual hospital. We're also working with um, a lot of the restaurants in Chestnut Hill are getting together and providing the meals to the Chestnut Hill Hospital. So lo lots of different things like that in the, uh, in the community that we're able to, to help out with. Um, let's see, so that's kind of, you know, where we came from and kind of some of the changes that we made. I mean, we had to make a lot, a lot of changes to our operation. Um, and I think that, you know, for me, that's one of the great takeaways is how incredibly fast when, when needs must, you know, how incredibly fast you can pivot and make decisions and get everyone on board. And I think that 
all of the department divisions and differences kind of went away. Everyone is just all hands on deck doing whatever it takes to get things done. So you have, you know, regional managers who, one of my regional managers thinks he's going to be an expert pizza cook once this is all done because he's made so many pizzas um, for, for delivery. And, uh, you know, I know I was in the office the other day. Um, I was scrubbing the toilets because we, uh, we stopped our, our cleaning vendors, you know, as we cut off non-essential services, that was one that, that we got rid of. And so I have, um, I volunteered to uh, drive beer to our Rehoboth location since I'm closest to that location. So I've made several trips driving down to Rehoboth with supplies and stuff for them. And, uh, you know, again, it's, it's like whatever it takes, all hands on deck, whatever is needed in the time. So I think, you know, I think that's really positive for, for people to see that. Um, see that managers are stepping in and doing whatever whatever it takes. Um, you know, we're, we're sending out messages. Uh, we have a learning management system, Saba, we're using. And um, any of you who have an LMS, you know what a struggle it is to get everyone to use your LMS. And this has been a blessing from an LMS perspective because that's our main source of communication. So more people are now logged into the LMS and responding to my blog than uh, ever before because they want the messages, they wanna know what's going on. So it actually helped me get the LMS out there to all of the folks that are, are on furlough. And they can message me directly through that, right? So they are sending messages if they have questions. Well, what happens to my insurance? Well, what, what about this? What about that? They can directly message me through the, um, through the LMS and get their, their question answered immediately. So, um, I think they like that. You know, I think that I've gotten some really positive feedback about that, and I'm sure that they'll feel more comfortable approaching me after this is all over, um, you know, to continue to ask their questions since we've now kind of on a different, a different level. You know, I think they're, they're uh, using me differently than they, than they did in the past. Um, what else? You know, we made, oh my gosh, we made so many changes. We simplified our menu because, of course, we have so many less people and so many less uh, cooks in the restaurant. So we simplified the menu. We increased the number of cans, which actually that's what I'm drinking today, one of our cans of beer. Um, you know, we increased our takeout cans and growlers and crowlers and all of that. Um, we, gosh, what else did we do? Oh, we're even doing changes like um, while, while we have so many less people, there's some things that we could implement that are much easier to implement when you have less people, like some changes to payroll. Um, things like that, even systems changes, some IT system changes, where since there's so many hours now that someone's not in the restaurant, there's downtime um, that IT can fix some things that otherwise, you know, were problematic that they might have to do in the middle of the night or something. So um, there's changes like that that, that we're able to make. Um, we, uh, we've partnered with new new vendors, like we we're unable to get like eggs and milk were a problem there. And so we partnered with a local farm and they were having difficulty um, getting rid of their milk because all the schools are closed. And so they have a lot less volume. And so that's part of the milk that's in our marketplace that, that we're selling in our craft marketplace. Um, so yeah, just, you know, a ton, a ton of, of uh, changes. I'm trying to think if there's anything, anything else. Um, you know, I think that uh, for some of us, this is a time to catch up on things because it's not as busy. You know, I have, normally I have 70, 1,700 employees. Now I have about 100. So I have a lot more time to, to catch up on things and um, get projects done so that we're ready to go when we can bring people back. You know, we're um, ready to, to go. So I'm really focusing on trying to get um, major projects that you never get to. Um, you know, emptying that email list, emptying that, that bucket of things that, that I don't get to because there's just not time. Um, yeah, so, you know, of course, there's always some positives, but a lot of, a lot of negatives in this, in, this, uh, in this kind of situation. And so there's been a mixture of messages to the employees between, we have, we have, a, um, we have a safety mascot um, who we call 86. Let me see if you can, oh, no, you can't see him. But anyways, he's a little, he's a little knife in a chef coat and uh, he represents safety for us. And so we have him delivering messages like we're going to get through this and we have little 86 in a little mask and, you know, we, we have him 
like giving messages to hopeful messages and stuff to to our employees. So um, we do things like that. We give them information, tons of information. You know, if you're homeschooling your kids, here's resources. If you're bored, if you need to exercise, here's resources. Just trying to provide a ton of information to um, to our folks to keep them engaged and um, let them know we're thinking of them and and can't wait till they till they get back. So. Um, I guess the final thing that I'll mention and then, you know, open up for questions. Um, Vicki, you mentioned, you know, the future is so interesting and in the restaurant industry, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens as we open up. Because, you know, of course, the states are talking and the government is talking about um, spacing out and not allowing a full restaurant worth of guests. And so they're talking about different distances, you know, is it going to be six feet between tables or um, what kind of kind of distance is going to be between the tables? Um, how is service going to change? Will our servers wear masks to your table and gloves? Like, you know, there's, there's a whole, and of course right now they're doing that masks and gloves, um, you know, but for how long will they do that? And, and uh, all of, all of those changes. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Some of the things people are, are considering um, to make changes for, for what, uh, to make guests comfortable when they come back, you know, so that people actually can see, visually see how much, how often we're sanitizing and cleaning and seeing the steps that we're taking to keep customers safe. You know, I think that's, that's a big direction that we're going in. We're talking about new technology, like, um, you know, order and pay at the table on your own with a tablet that we can sanitize after each customer so that you don't have to hand cash and, or credit cards or whatever between you and the server. We were talking about so many so many different things. And we'll probably retain some of the stuff that we're doing now, like those meal kits. I think we'll keep those. I think we'll get more creative with some of the meal kits, but I think we'll keep meal kits going. And um, some of the stuff that we've, for sure, all the delivery stuff that we've um, implemented now, we'll keep going. Um, there's, I mean, one of my huge focuses has been on all of the training and safety procedures for when employees come back. So, um, if somebody comes in and says, oh, I feel like I have a fever and a cough, what does a manager have to do? What are the steps they need to take? What does our restaurant have to do? What are the steps they have to take? All of those kinds of things. Um, how do you wear a mask? What do you do with your mask? Can you reuse your mask? Um, if you want to go to the restroom, where do you put your mask? Can you put it on the counter? Can you put it, you know, do you put it in your pocket? Like all of these little decisions about um, what to actually do with this new PPE that people will be, will be wearing is kind of a lot of stuff that, that I've been focused on. And then of course, all of the stuff for when people come back because things aren't gonna change. We're doing models of, okay, so if, we, if we're allowed to open, you know, what is 20% of our business look like? What is, if we get up to 30% of our business, 40% of our normal volume, 50% of our volume, all the different models and how many employees would we need at that point and what would operations look like? So we're doing all of those kinds of modeling and, and what tr new training would be needed, all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, everything from that to like, what are we doing with benefits? Are there going to be any changes to benefits? And, and for example, we pushed off, normally we would do years of service gifts in June. And we've already put out there that we're, we're not going to do them until December. We'll, we'll just move it off. You know, we're just, we're just going to push that off. Um, so, you know, just everything from the big decisions to the little itty bitty stuff. It's, it's so crazy how many things it impacts. So that was a little whirlwind of kind of what's going on in our world. Um, thanks, thanks for listening. Lorraine and Shelley, I have a twofold question. Number one, you know, to what do you attribute, attribute the quick pivoting that your leadership team did? Is it because you have a really visionary leader because you guys are always aligned anyway and you work well as a team? And then how often is your leadership team meeting now? Yeah, so now we're meeting um, once a week. Uh, so, uh, I'm still meeting with my HR team twice a week, um, but the leadership team is meeting once a week and the uh, board of directors are meeting once a week. Um, you know, what do I attribute it to? I mean, I think that um, we've always been, we're, we're a small to medium sized business. And so I think we've always been a little bit more nimble than some, uh, some larger players. So, um, I think this just, you know, pushed us in that direction. Like you just, you had to, you, you had to move along. So yes, our um, CEO immediately put some guidelines in place and um, I am actually uh, put the meetings in, I, 
I lead the, uh, the meetings um, for the leadership team um, that happen. And um, yeah, you know, I think it, I really think it was a team effort. I think yeah. that huge thing is the leadership team um, working together really well and the CEO just doing a good job of delegating who was responsible for what and, you know, accepting that, okay, you know, he might normally lead the meeting, but he has enough on his plate. So why don't I lead the meetings and, um, you know, and someone else can do something else. So I think delegating well and, um, you know, allowing different people to step up. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I think everyone can take themselves off mute if they need to, to ask a question. So feel free. And we should have like, we should have done a beer sampling, I think, from Iron Hill Brewery for today oh, as yes. part of yeah, this that discussion. Been we like, that's a huge miss on our part, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am drinking our um, Pog Champ, which is a nice sour with, you know, pomegranate, orange. It's a delicious beer. So Sounds delicious. <laughs> that's what I'm drinking. Um, that sounds awesome. I would also chime in too, Lorraine, that just as a plug, Cinco de Mayo is coming up and not only are they doing growlers of beer, but you can get takeout wine and also growlers of margaritas. Oh. Which yeah, I margarita growlers were something that we added during this time. Absolutely. I think it's a we're great doing idea. Others. I do too. Wow. Yeah, we, we, we did Easter dinner um, takeout that you could take out and we're also doing Mother's Day, you know, Mother's Day brunch or Mother's Day dinners. That, oh, nice. Uh, that the dads can cook for the moms, so yeah. Is that, on the, is that on the website for the margarita growlers? <laughs> Alan's already on. Alan's already checking. <laughs> My wife's Get a couple extra, Alan. <laughs> be... <laughs> You've been missing out. You better catch up. <laughs> I really have. I love Iron Hill, too, so I'm surprised I didn't hear you. Margaritas and a meal kit. Do you have a meal kit for Cinco exactly. de Mayo, too? I'll, I'll, oh, I'll I'm sure. I'm, you know, we have, we have several meal kits. There's a taco meal kit, so. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, there, you there you go. There you go. Awesome. Who else has a question for Lorraine? So, I, so it's Deb Kaufman, I have a question. It, you have done a remarkable job of pivoting, um, and I think you're. I take it you, you're very busy, but my guess is this is like the first time now you probably had to take a breath. Probably, if there was one thing you wish you had done sooner, or even later, what's the what's looking back? What's the one thing you you would have you, you wish you had thought through differently? Yeah, you know, that very first week when um, we, were, we were meeting, but we were assuming we had a little bit of time, like we didn't understand that one of the um, cities was going to be closed down, one of the counties was going to be closed down within 24 hours, right? We, we didn't understand that much because everything was changing. Was it, I mean, really, it was on a daily change we were getting new information. Mm. And so I think that we waited too long to send out the communication to our employees on what was going on because we were trying to wait till we had information to give them. And, um, you know, I think, I think that was a mistake. We should, we should have said, we have no idea, but we're figuring it out. <laughs> I don't know something. So even in our FAQs, like I did an FAQs and invited them to send in questions and in the FAQs, I, you know, I made some of them up. Right. So one of the FAQs was, why did it take you so, so long? Like we're desperate for information. Why did it take you so long? And then I answered, you know, that question, you're absolutely right. We should not have taken this long to, to get back to you and, um, you know, giving you information, but we're committed to providing information and committed to answering your questions. So keep sending them in, you know, so um, I, I think that five days was too long to, to wait for, uh, you know, we we're working on the FAQs, we were working on, on stuff, but um, it just, it just took too long. Well, and I think that's a great point for everybody to keep in mind going forward which is saying, I don't know, is probably preferable to saying nothing. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Even wait, when we yeah. come out of it. And we all want to give this great information and we feel really yeah. responsible for employees, but sometimes we forget that they can handle the truth better than we think. Mm -hmm. You know, and my husband is a professor and he was um, having a conversation with his students the other day that, the other day that I was um, listening into since he's doing it from home. <laughs> and, uh, he was talking about the scientific method and he's like, you know, people are so wanting always the correct answer. And he said, that's not what science is about. It's about the best information that we have at the time. And then as mm -hmm. soon as new information comes along, pivoting. And so I think that's a really, a really important lesson for HR, you know, and um, 
we, we always, we really are, we're trying to give the definitive answer so no one has to ask us another question, you know, about like, it answers right. everything you ever wanted to know. Um, but no, like we, we should be, we should be thinking of them as living documents and, um, and they have to change as things change. So I think that managers need to see more flexibility, you know, and I've trying, been trying to, to um, give that message of mm -hmm. don't expect this to say the same or, you know, here's what it is today, but it might change tomorrow. Like really trying to get them used to that. Um, just because I give you an answer today does not mean that's the definitive answer. <clears throat> Thanks. That, that's very helpful. And, and I'm sure I speak for everybody on the call. I appreciate just your openness and just putting it all out there. Yeah. Very helpful. I, I do think that people right now just want transparency. It doesn't have to be the answer they want to hear, or it doesn't have to be all the information mm -hmm. they need, but even saying, I don't know, or, you know, we're trying our best, or at least it's a communication because mm -hmm. no answer is unsettling. Yeah. 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 I, like I say, I, it really wasn't that many days, but wow, you know, still we should have been faster. Mm -hmm. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Lorraine, I'm Lisa Lord. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I, oh my God, I got so much useful information. So um, thank you guys for pulling off this happy hour. And I'm so glad to have joined. That it's such a big lesson that you just talked about. And um, I just want to give you a lot of credit, but re-emphasize it. We know I, my background's organizational development and change management. And for years, we've been telling people that the key to change is letting people know when you don't know. That when you can say, we're going to try, we don't know, we'll give you up-to-date information, then you're showing your human side. And when you show your human side, people can connect with you better. But I think Iron Hill has done so much more than that because you showed your humanity <laughs> towards the community, not just towards your own employees. And I love everything you're doing. I think it's an absolutely <laughs> remarkable story. And I pray that Iron Hill can come back regardless of the operating model that you end up with. I hope it's a lot more than 50%, but nobody so knows, sweet. right? But I right. love, really, really love how you're approaching it and think there's so many leadership lessons from it. You know, yeah, I'd um, like to capitalize on what Lisa just said, it's Deirdre, that um, this is a time when company culture is really demonstrating what they actually do versus the mission statements versus the culture that they advertise. You know, Lorraine, you're a good example of a great culture that shows that they care about their employees and it might be a time where other companies that aren't as caring about their employees are really blatantly obvious too. So mm -hmm. you've used this as a good example of showing your uh, strong culture and positivity, whereas others you know, might, might be handling it differently, especially about the communication piece, because uh, I've known a lot of companies and organizations which uh, they love to review, re-review, and review again, and then have 15 different sign-offs before communication mm -hmm. can be made. And it really just slows down the process, and people think that they're, they're holding back information, and they're not being told things, and then they come to their own conclusions, and it just gets ugly. Um, and you, even though you're saying it took you a while, um, I'm sure I can guarantee you other companies took even longer. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, kudos to you for recognizing, you know, trying to move quickly. And I'm sure you did compared to others. So mm -hmm. good job. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you that, like I say, our employees, I mean, I've gotten some incredibly positive feedback from our employees. I mean, I, I forwarded a letter the other day about this, this guy's like, I can't wait to get back to work. I love it there. You guys are doing the best you can in a difficult circumstance. You know, I mean, it's amazing, right? Because they're the ones that are impacted the most and they're giving me positive feedback. I'm sure you're too busy. I'm so sorry I have to ask you this question about my unemployment, but you know, could you, could you tell me anything about, you know, but um, they're, they're just, I've really seen the best of employees, right? They're being so understanding, so kind and um, positive, you know, which is amazing in this time. Well, it's really a reflection of how you're treating them. Mm -hmm. That's what I was just going to say. let my dog in or he'll start barking. <laughs> I think you're right, dear Joe. I was going to say the same thing. I think it reflects back what they are getting from you. And that's why they're gracious and kind is because you're gracious and kind. Your organization's gracious and kind. So I think that's why you get it back. They see that you're, 
I mean, the meals and the, and the cards you give them and everything else that you're doing, I think to help them and pay for their benefits, that, that says a lot about your organization, so. Mm -hmm. we, um, we were two to like maybe four weeks away from opening our new town store. We had announced um, four stores that we were opening in 2020 and um, we were 50% we were hired for our new town store, which was, was gonna open up in, you know, like I say, within a month of when all of this happened. I mean, it was just crazy. And then our Exton store was after that and then two in Georgia. We had already hired the entire management teams for all four new restaurants. Um, you know, so it's gonna be crazy because I don't know that we'll be able to open all those restaurants, certainly not in 2020. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a lot, a lot going on. Mm. Well, my wife says she's not cooking for the next three months after this is <laughs> over. So if she's uh, any indication, then I think restaurants are going to, I think there's pent up demand. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and you and know, so, right. Do you deliver the margaritas or do I have to physically? <laughs> so that is a, that is a um, legal issue. And uh, the, um, <laughs> we have an attorney the, on the phone, so it's fine. You're fine. <laughs> Yeah, the, the fine, delivery... fine. Just, bring them, just bring them by, just bring them by. <laughs> <laughs> the delivery places don't have a license. So like a DoorDash doesn't have a liquor license to deliver. So we can, you know, we would be fine with it, but they don't have a license. So they're trying to get it, but they currently um, don't have a liquor license. So you either have to do the, you know, drive by and we'll put it in your trunk or, <laughs> yeah. And you know, Lorraine, you're this, you're the second of our guest speakers. And the speaker last week also said they're using this quote unquote, you know, quiet time or downtime to make um, systems changes. So I just think it's an interesting thing that we've heard two weeks in a row now that IT and or I, our HRIS teams are making changes to systems while we have mm -hmm. a little bit of quiet or not a lot of traffic in the system. I just think it's an interesting thing to keep hearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have some positive come out of it in the end, right? So yes. yeah. get some projects done and feel like you, I think, you know, that's one of the things that I actually, um, I moved into this house in June and it's a 1929 home. So there's lots of projects. And that actually has been a blessing during this time because my husband and I are working on all these projects uh, on the weekends and you actually feel like you're accomplishing something, which I think during these times when you can't get out and you can't see friends, you know, you can't socialize and all that, like it's great to have a project. And so I think the same applies at work, right? It's great to see something getting accomplished that will have a positive result even while all this other chaos and craziness is, is going on. Yeah. yeah, I gotta say the utilization of your LMS, what a surprising outcome. And that is so much to your advantage. They'll get yes. used to it. Uh, really, congratulations on that surprise outcome. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And that's because one of the systems that we were using is <laughs> going away and so, we're more utilized, and plus I'm sending all my messages to the LMS because I want it used. Um, but yeah, I know it's this, uh, I'm like, okay, my LMS has never been more used than, now not for the true purpose, right? Not for training, but uh, once they know how to get in there and they see how to use it and start moving around, I'm hoping that, you know, that that continues. Cool. Okay. Other questions for Lorraine or comments? I have, I have a question. Oh, sorry, have, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, you got um, it's maybe for everyone to um, look at uh, time off and kind of how you're handling that, managing that, because uh, we're not seeing employees take their time off. Mm -hmm. And um, we see a lot of people burning out at this point. And um, also, if and when we get back into the office, finally, we don't want, you know, everyone taking vacation at the same time kind of thing. So um, I know I know some, depending on the industry you're in and everything like that, I know some employers are, you know, making sure that employees don't have a certain, over a certain balance, things like that. But, um, you know, just any feedback really, because we're kind of looking to get creative with it. So people don't come back from the office and want to take two weeks off and, and everyone's kind of back out of the office and, you know, we can't run the business and also, you know, just encourage people that it's okay to unplug when you're home, even, you know, even though you're working from home kind of thing, like separating the two. Yeah, so from my perspective, and I'm sure others can jump in from their, from their perspective, for our industry, it's really interesting, right? Because, um, because of the reduced 
amount of business and there's no customers coming in the door. I mean, normally you would have the restaurant open from eight in the morning until about two in the morning between, you know, coming in to prep, clean, et cetera, get ready, and then closing up in the evening. So depending on the day of the week, right? Not, not um, two in the morning on a Monday, but you know, you could have them between those hours. So now that business is so reduced, our managers are working um, much less, right? Their days are much shorter. So in the restaurant industry, a, um, a five day, 10 hour day is like a, a normal thing. Like most, a lot of restaurants, especially smaller restaurants, you would see 12 hour days. And, and we're like, we're so proud we have 10 hour days, you know, <laughs> in, our, in our company. And now they can work less than that. So um, they actually are, although they're working very hard during the, and doing stuff they wouldn't normally do um, during the hours that they're in the restaurant, they're actually, they have more time to themselves and, um, you know, they actually get to go home. We're, if we close at eight, they're actually home at night to see their spouse, you know? So um, they actually are getting, in that sense, more downtime than they normally would. And we we've have arranged the schedule so that everybody gets two days off a week. So um, they're, they're definitely getting time off. And as far as the office staff, like I know with my HR team, I'm like, look, you need to take downtime. T take the time with your kids. Um, my two HR folks that are working, only two of my HR folks are working and the others are on furlough as well. Um, but the two that are working, um, you know, I'm, they both have young kids that they're homeschooling. One has four and one has three. So they have a lot going on in their households um, with kids. And I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter what time you're working. Don't worry about the time. Like just um, take, take down time, make sure you take time off. Like when we were on the 24, you know, no rest kind of days, you, you were with me, you know, you helped me through it, but now we're not in that. So, so take the time. Yeah. So, um, and then the, uh, employees actually interesting, but remember what industry I'm in and the, with the $600, they're making more money on unemployment than they are if they use their PTO. So they don't want to use their PTO because they would make less money. Right. So different, different issue. Michelle, I have a client that has about 900 employees and they're faced with the same thing. The people aren't taking time off and my client has a use it or lose it policy. So employees are asking if they can change it for 2021 and allow them to roll over into next, excuse me, for 2020 roll over into 2021. And I was talking to the CEO the other day and I said, I think the perception is people feel like they're getting ripped off. They want to use their pay time to do something fun, right? Like go to the shore, <laughs> take right. your kids to Ocean City in July, right? And so she has an, a, a town hall meeting with her employees next week. And she's going to say, listen, if we're stuck at home for God help us until the fall, you're going to need time off. You're going to need to think about your vacation days as different, maybe just mental health days. Like a lot of people have kids and they, they think maybe playing with their kids in the yard is not fun because they're doing it every day. Right. right. So I think people are just starting to experience this just like you are. So I would love if you ever have any other ideas or get some great suggestions, bring them up on the other calls, because I think a lot of people are going to struggle with that. If we're at home in the summer, um, we're back to work in a very, very, very modified way. Most of us right. are home with our families. It's going to be tough and people are going to need mental health days. They are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we carry over five days and you have to use them by March 31st of the right. following year, but we were thinking of maybe doing 10 days, you know, for 2021 instead, right. or right. Uh, either 10 days or five day payout, something like that, just to get a little bit creative. But um, I, it, it just, it's hard, but we also want people to take time too, because we, yeah. we really are seeing a lot of people burn out. I yeah. mean, there's people working all hours of the night sometimes, and we have our main office in, in the UK. So, you know, they're logging on when we're still sleeping and then people are waking up and doing work. So it's just been, you know, it's really hard to unplug when you're right there and you're getting your emails on your phone and you're not really able to go anywhere. Yeah, this thing people feel like they're getting ripped off. They want to do something great and wonderful with their time yeah. off, you know, yeah, and, but, and I think I mean, that's the issue, but you're right. People are going to need There that. might not be that a chance. So we're I kind know. of like, yeah, just, you know, a couple days or something. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. kind of the messaging behind it too, it, we're trying to figure out if it's better to come from HR or their manager or something like that as well as, you know, you should take a day off, you know, that kind of thing. Or, if, you know, HR should send something out about burning out and, you know, make sure you put in some time off, um, you know, you have this many days kind of thing and, and everything like that too. So we're just trying to like 
figure something out to do to really. Well, if anyone hears of any great suggestions, send them, I guess Dylan sends out the invitations, right? For this Zoom invite, maybe if you wouldn't mind or shoot me an email, I don't care. I'm happy to collect them for next week and we can share, I'm happy to do that. It's a good question. I think Alan, the two things, Alan. The, I'm sorry, the two things that we really have trouble managing and we really, really need to figure out how to do it. And you, you touched on both of them, but they're kind of separate and distinct important issues is number one, how do you make people feel that they're not getting ripped off to use Shelley's words in, in using their paid time off for vacation time? And then as you mentioned, Michelle, how do you how do you make clear the line between work time and non-work time anymore? Yeah. Because it's you yeah. don't have that separation as much when you don't have that drive home or the train ride in between. Right. And like yeah. you said, it's easy when the computer's sitting there right in front of you, especially for global or even right. with different time zones. You've got to really it's a messaging and communication piece on how do we let people know you've got to unplug, you gotta stop, you've got to take a little more effort than you normally do to to yeah. draw that line between working and just turning it off. It's a tough challenge. Yeah. And we're not asking people to take, you know, multiple days off in a row or anything like that. It's just, you know, take a long weekend and go, like I said, go outside and play with your kids or something like that. Um, you know, just a day here and, there and, and remember that that time's available that you just because you're working from home now, you don't have to feel like you have to work around the clock kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I know in like different industries, it depends on how their experience, we're not really, um, you know, experiencing any any um, type of loss or anything like that. But I, I used to work in the staffing industry and they specifically staffed schools. Um, a lot of our clients were schools and, and things like that. So they're making, they changed their PTO policy where, you know, you can't have, you have to take time. You can't have over a certain balance of pay time off hours because, you know, when they go back, it's going to be hopefully when they go back school will start and you know that's their busy season and everything like that so um you know they don't want to, these people to have these gigantic uh balances of pto and you know then carry them into the next year and, and everything like that as well so i mean it, it, i guess it, it really does depend on where you are with everything too yeah <clears throat> Um, this is Annette favorite. I'm with West Pharmaceutical Services. And one of the, some of the things that we're doing here at West to try and get employees to get away from the computer or help them relieve some stress and anxiety is one, we curated a number of articles through our learning management system to talk about, you know, stress relief, how do you reduce anxiety. Um, we even included things for children. Um, that they can, you know, things you can do with your children to try and get our employees to realize you got to step away from the computer. The other thing we're working on is we're using our employee business resource groups. So think of them as your diversity network groups, if you have any, and having them try and do some social activities like fitness challenges, um, you know, book clubs that you can do virtually to try and encourage employees to still connect, but connect in a social way, not in a work way. Yeah. And then the um, final thing is, is we have really um, amped up a lot of the communications associated with our employee assistance programs, um, because that, you know, that's where they can get help. And, and we know there's a lot of folks who are feeling isolated, depression, et cetera. So we're pushing a lot on that. Nice to see you, Annette. Thanks Hi, for joining. Thanks. thanks. I'm sorry I was late. That's okay. <laughs> Alan, I think you had a question. Yeah, well, it was a common question. I would say the common part was, I think, the way that um, Iron Hill hand handled, like, essentially having to pivot very quickly due to the law order was much better than the way the uh, NCAA handled the Big East tournament. The kids played, like, a full half, and then they just pretty much made them leave the court. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm a big basketball fan, and that was very awkward. Uh, but my – question was primarily like I discuss it with my wife quite often and do you think like the terms of the future because people are going to go out when this is all finished but do you think in the future we are going to implement mask way more than we did in the past like our mask essentially here to stay in 2021 2022 and how we interact with people are you asking me that yeah in your opinion <laughs> like, okay I'm, I'm <laughs> 
I go out, I go out, like, I mean, I, I network, I go to events and all that. And I can imagine even when everybody, I mean, I come from a family full of physicians. My mom is a physician, my dad's a physician, even my sister. So therefore I'm a clown compared to them. Uh, but primarily what I make sure that I do is like, know when I go, when this is all like done, I can imagine myself being quite hesitant to joining these events with a bunch of people and not have mask on or whatever the case may be. So yeah. I'm wondering if that's yeah. something in the restaurant business, you know, there's a lot of people. I, I go to Iron Hill a lot. I mean, do you think you're going to see something like you mentioning before the servers possibly having masks yeah. and gloves and that kind of jazz? And they will initially. It's just when yeah. will they be able to stop doing that? I mean, I, you know, just from what I'm, all these millions of webinars that I'm going to, mm -hmm. um, the CDC, all these other ones, uh, I, you know, I, I think that, um, I think that until there's a vaccination, we probably will see a lot of masks, you know, until there is some sort of um, bigger solution than, than just social distancing, we probably will see, see masks. Mm -hmm. I, I will tell you, you know, some of the strangest things, I mean, in these, in these um, chats with the restaurant industry and such, um, I actually had a lawyer tell me that we should have, and I'm like, I just can't even imagine this. We should have guests sign a release when they walk in our building that, that they know that, you know, that there's a chance that they could get, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like we're a hospitality industry. We're going to have a guest walk in the door and say, you can't come in our restaurant unless you sign this release. I mean, it just sounds bizarre, but I'm telling you yeah. that restaurant companies are legitimately thinking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, Hey, hey Lorraine, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about you, but I haven't figured out how to eat through a mask yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't either. <laughs> I, told, I told one of uh, one of my employees today. I said in the, in our in our Slack channel, I said anybody's free. I'm I'm opening up to to driveway beers, social distancing. Come have a beer with me. I miss you all. And I said now my biggest concern is drinking too much and accidentally hugging someone. <laughs> Which was, I used to have far better, bigger concerns about drinking too much. And uh, <laughs> oh, I hope I don't accidentally hug you. I'm sorry if I do. And a takeaway <laughs> gift, uh, Michael, will, will be a roll of toilet paper. Your That's takeaway right. gift. Right? It's a party I, favor. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to any bar where I have to sign any sort of release. <laughs> no, me either. Me either, actually. Me either. <laughs> but you know, like they're, the government is expecting us to police, police all these people and make, um, sir, you are not six feet away from her. You know, no. <laughs> it's, yep. uh, you know, not gonna it's, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, that stuff's not going to happen, I don't think. Well, I think in the beginning, it will be maybe uh, some of the suggestions are like open by reservation only, and they have to be family members and no more than four at a table. You know, they think that um, there's lots of little things that may lead up till we eventually um, loosen guidelines, but yeah, it's, it's going to be well, very interesting. The, the interesting thing, and I don't know if you're, I'm sure that you're considering that. I'm sure the whole industry is considering it, but you know, of course, this is becoming very political as everything is. And so there is, you know, there's a certain group of people who think that this is government control yeah. and, you yeah. know, as we're all seeing, as we're all starting to see. So it will be interesting to see how that tension plays out you know, once the, once the things start opening up more and, and I, and I do think of things like restaurants and bars and, you know, you institute, you instituting certain things that, that could become problematic really quickly, I think for, you know, certain yeah. people who feel like that's an infringement upon their freedom. Right. And of course we're in so many different places. So, you know, there's, there's might be slightly different politics depending on the city that we're in or the town that we're in. Right. So we might see very different reactions. Um, you're not, I, I remember. We're not in Georgia, though, right? No, South Carolina, but not Georgia. We actually were supposed to open two locations in Atlanta this year. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Is that? I'm assuming that's now on hold. It's on hold. Yeah. Yeah. I just I was thinking of when when we opened our restaurant in Greenville, South Carolina, and I was um, teaching the sexual harassment class, and wow, what a different reaction I got there. And I get <laughs> with my crowd in Philadelphia, I get a very different reaction. So, you know, you've got different crowds, different laws, different, everything is going to be very individualized. Yeah. Interesting. So we are coming up on five o'clock. I know Shelly had to pop out. Um, get another drink. No, just, <laughs> just want to be respectful of people's time. Um, if anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to chime in, but, um, uh, we have 
a great a group of speakers lined up for the next two or three weeks. So hopefully everybody can, can join back in um, next Wednesday. We'll be sending out an invite with details on that probably in the next day or two. Um, does anyone else have any comments, questions, things they want to, you know, just generally out into the, the community? Doesn't necessarily have to be related to anything specific we've been talking about. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Great job, guys. Thank you. It's good to see you guys. Yeah, appreciate it very much. Yeah, yeah great to see everyone. Thanks. Have guys. a great night, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Uh, Thank, Lorraine. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lorraine. Thanks. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lorraine. Before we let Margarita. <laughs> <laughs>